God, he became the perfect offering, the perfect sacrifice, so that God the Father could open once again his kingdom that had been closed ever since Adam and Eve screwed up and ate the stupid apple. Because that's what Brynn did for everybody, right? Until then, see, God's perfect. So until Adam and Eve, every one of us had a perfect life on this earth. If Adam and Eve hadn't screwed up and sinned, we would all have the perfect life here. That's the, what the deal was. God created paradise. And he made Adam and Eve and every all the kids they were supposed to have perfect until they sinned. And then the world became imperfect. And our, our lives became imperfect. So Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, volunteered. He said, hey, Dad. That's the Father. He said, hey, Dad, I'll go down there. I'll become one of them so they can relate to me. And then because I'm your only son and I'm God, I will offer myself for all their imperfectness so that you can once again give them perfect lives that they can't have on earth. But now, instead of a perfect life on earth, he threw open his kingdom. It's like the Queen of England said to you, well, when you get to this age, then you can come and live in Buckingham Palace and have all the money, all the servants, all the cars, all the planes that you want, since you can't have it in your regular life. But when you get to here, you can come and you can live in Buckingham Palace. Well, that's what God the Father did. When Jesus became perfect man, perfect God, and offered himself for our imperfectness, the Father threw open his kingdom and says, when we're through with this rotten life here, we get to move in to God's house, to his kingdom, and have everything perfectly. But Jesus couldn't have opened that up if he had also been God, the perfect offering to the Father for our sins. Another reason that he did this, and you're going to experience this in just a little bit, and you already did at Mass, is he became one of us, human. I mean, you could like kick him, and he would go, ouch. If I kicked him harder, he'd probably go, ouch. Ouch, okay. He could feel pain. He could feel disappointment. He could feel happiness. He could smile. He could laugh. He could cry like he did many times. So that we can see him as just one of us, but yet to know that he's God. And the only way to know that is through our heart, through our soul. And he came because he wanted, you know, there were a lot of people around, obviously, they crucified him, who didn't recognize him as God. You know, he was walking around, looked like anybody else. He didn't float, he didn't glow in the dark. You know? He looked like every other human. If you kicked him, he'd go, ouch. He got tired. He got hungry. Everything. And yet, if their hearts were open, they could know he was also God. And what? Who are the first people that we have a special holiday for every year? The first people. I'll give you a hint. There were three of them. The first people that also recognized in this human was also God. Three people, the three kings. The three kings came up to this little human baby, fully human baby, born out in the middle of nowhere, in a stable. And yet their hearts were open, their eyes of faith were open, and they fell to their knees. Because they recognized he was also their God and could give them everything. And they fell down and worshipped him and gave him the best gifts they had, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so that's so we too can look at him in the Eucharist as Catholics. We can look at him in the Eucharist and what looks like plain old bread, what looks like plain old wine, tastes like bread, tastes like wine. And yet if we've got hearts that are open and eyes of faith that are open, we can see that 